I, I, but I feel like I need to know more about the, about the motivation for Yasuke being the character they include, mm-hmm. because to me on, on surface, it feels like we want to be diversity and even our diversity, even though we're already doing a Japanese story. So that is diversity. If you consider it from like a mostly European standpoint, we wanted to double on it. Like they're right. almost like, Oh, you think this is cool? Check this bleep out. One of the samurais is a black guy. Now that can, that may not be what their intent is. Right. But yeah. When I see all these different companies and different corporations, um, you know, putting out whatever they were doing when the whole George Floyd thing was happening and pandering, which is what it was. Right. And um, seeing no real progress be made there. I have to wonder what the intent of using of, of including Yasuke's story is. Are you using his story and his mythos as a means to. I don't know, gain favor say that you're doing something different, say that you're doing something inclusive, or do you actually genuinely want to portray his story in a way that is meaningful and that enlightens everyone? Hello and welcome to level 104 of the Thoughts and Players podcast, the gaming podcast with Voltex and those strings attached. I am Jeremy, here with my compadre, David. What up? David, how are you doing this evening? It is, uh... I'm good. A little tired. Yeah. How about you? Tired, same. Been doing cleaning, been doing some yard work, trying to keep active, stay up, you know. Did a little bit of, uh, I don't know what they're called, RDLs, reverse, down lateral reverse, I don't know, downloadable content. I don't know what it is. Sounds it's like supposed something to, I don't do. It's supposed oh, to be some uh, something. It's supposed to work out your back, which I've been okay. trying to get my lower back. And it's supposed to, supposed to, supposed to get your butt in shape. And, okay, I can, cool. and I can I can use it. So um but try that as well as some other exercises. But yeah, a little bit worn out, but ready to go. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, chickens, ducks, and hens, the types of fowl, maybe waterfowl, buffalo. We welcome into this level of the pod. We're here to talk about games. There's a lot of thoughts we have. We have some compelling topics, I think, for this episode. But of course, we're going to start with what we've been playing. And I'm going to talk. Well, I might save a little bit of. I was going to say something for what we've been playing, but I technically haven't been playing it. I've been watching it. So I'll save that for final thoughts. So let's okay. talk about what we have been playing then. And um, I can start it off or if you want to sure. take it. All right. I'll start it off. So what have I been playing? Well, I have been playing not much, but I would say the little bit that I have been playing is a tiny smidge of Manor Lords. So there's a thing happening here that I've found that happens with me quite a bit. Yeah. Is that sometimes when I experience a hiccup, a bump in the road, mm-hmm. it um it entangle it gets me it gets me messed up it gets me awry my path becomes inhibited and that's what's happened with manor lords really? is that because manor lords to side decided you know my save decided to in so many words unalive itself yeah and i had to go back in and restart something else i don't have the same passion i got 20 more 20, 30 more people but these ain't my these ain't my day ones right <laughs> i lost my day ones <laughs> I lost them to the to the ones and zeros. Right. So it's been a little bit of a struggle to stay invested in the game as much as I would have during that first playthrough. But um, been trying to make way. I can feel myself. I feel myself strain. And if I had to predict, make a prediction, I don't know how many more weeks I have in Manor Lords. I want to actually, in order to try to avoid this, Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to restart again. Right? Third time's a charm. I was about to say that. Yeah. So I think I want to yeah. restart again to see if I can get a better role with a better kind of situation that I feel more invested in and mm-hmm. see if I can keep it going that way. Because right now, this is not keeping my interest. I'm straying from the path as I do. I haven't mentioned, I don't think I mentioned it last episode, that I haven't played Fable 2 for, for a minute. I'll get back to it. I've been thinking about it, so I know I will play it. But um, that's mostly what I have been trying to do is play Manor Lords as far as games I've been playing. Have I played a little anything else? 
even like Roller Coaster Tycoon, I got distracted on it. I haven't really been back to it. That's another one I want to get back to. Um, I did try to play Two Point Hospital. Um, and it's it's like a hospital builder sim. They have one that came out recently called Two Point Campus. It's like building a campus university. Okay. I tried to play that because I had downloaded that. It was on Xbox Game Pass. And little did I know, it's not available on Xbox Game Pass anymore. So when I clicked to play it, they were like, you don't own this game. I'm like, this Ooh. is preposterous. I've downloaded it. <laughs> <laughs> they said, no, you don't own it. Uh, so uh, couldn't play that. But I'd say a little bit of Man of Lords. And if I had to give a distant, I guess a second of maybe, maybe I snuck 30 or 45 minutes of it in, it'd be Software Inc. Those are kind of the two that's been going right now. But uh, right. that's it for what I've been playing. Well, what I've been playing, I got the three now. You got you got your I back. I got the OW, I got the AL, and I got the DVD. Big three. Your big, big three is back. You've and, got uh, your uh <laughs> you've got your let's 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 you know what? I want to let you continue. Actually, you know what? You you continue and then I'll ask you the question afterwards. I'll ask okay. you the question afterwards. Yeah. Um they've been pretty fun. Uh DVD has a new chapter coming out. Right now it's in the uh PTB. I forget what that stands for exactly, mm-hmm. but it's a, like a test build stuff, you know, and it's uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Mm. They have Vecna coming in and they have two survivors and it's the first non-human survivors because they're elves. Yeah. And I know one of the perks, I don't know what the perk does, but you bring out like a acoustic guitar or something and you start playing music. So you just stand there. So it's it seems like a very trolling kind of perk, depending yeah. on what it actually does. I'm not too sure. But what they did add is if you're facing uh, Vecna, they put these random chests throughout the level, mm-hmm. and one of them is a mimic. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then if it's not a mimic, you uh, roll this dice, and, you know, 1 through 20, and one being a crappy item and two being a very good item. And that very good item, uh, you get this hand thing. And like when you jump into a lo- uh, locker really fast, mm-hmm. you can uh, teleport into a different locker. So that way, if you're like being chased, you can get out. of it. It's like a free, but it also right. hurts you for a state. So you, like if you're full health, it puts you into uh, a hit health. Okay. So there, there is a, you know, double-edged sword in that. Right. So I think, you know, adding a bunch of this stuff to that, I think it's a pretty good uh, DLC coming. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That sounds cool. Yeah. That's uh, that's what I've been playing. Okay. What okay. Your question? My question is, recently, uh, we've kind of talked about it a little bit in private, I think, as we were wrapping up recording. I'm, I'm sure the world knows that recently there was what they've called the great hip-hop rap battle. Okay. Oh, yeah, and yeah. it was mostly between uh, Drake and Kendrick Lamar. Yes. Okay. Now I'm of the opinion that both individuals come out looking horrible in this, but that's just my personal opinion. But at at one point, the whole the whole mystery of it was behind a big three, and for a lot of people, they were considering that the big three were Drake, Kendrick Lamar, and J Cole. Now J Cole has been removed from that. He's removed himself from that through his actions. Yes. We don't know who the big third is going to be. Some people say it's Tyler, the creator. Some people say that maybe it's uh, future. We don't know. But my question is, I want to know, of your big three, who's your Drake? Who's your Kendrick? And let's just put Tyler, the creator there. I'll put it there personally. And then who's your Tyler of your big three? Now, to get a little more info, like qualifiers for him because that was that what you're asking well like y- yeah like am i looking for so, what they are as well or am i looking for like my top three like so let's say drake is your you know drake's got he comes out with stuff all the time it's all fun it's so i'm playing this just for fun it's mindless whatever whatever right kendrick is more so about this kind of like really astute expression um and uh, and being like really kind of much more of a emotional and intelligent approach about stuff. So I would say it's maybe the game that you have the most investment in as far as your heart and your emotions. And then okay. Tyler is kind of this 
this kind of expressive, creative guy that represents kind of the the word the weird like nerd culture. So I guess the game you feel like you can nerd the most out with, right? Okay. I got it. I got it. Okay. So the Tyler one would have to be Dead by Daylight because the that one you can there's so many perks to choose from, so many different kind of builds. So you can really tune in to how you want to play that round or you know whatever you want to be serious or you want to troll you want to annoy the killer do you want to not be seen by the killer there's so many different variations you can play dead by daylight Mm -hmm. so that i definitely have to go for there okay now the one i feel the most invested in and like maybe care about the most and everything like that for you know the Kendrick side would have to be Apex. Mm-hmm. Like I I so badly want to improve in that game. Mm-hmm. And, you know all of them. You know I want to improve in all of them. But that one I want to like. I feel like I have so much more to learn in that game. Mm-hmm. And I could sit there and play it for serious for hours on end. Yeah. I actually on Steam I actually uh, hit. 3050 hours so that's not including the first two or 300 i played when it was only on origin yeah and my alt account yeah so then last but not least i guess the drake one would have to be overwatch i play it just as much i have about 3000 on that one as well and if i win lose whatever i'm not too upset about it Mm -hmm. but i just can't get away from it yeah i feel you that's nice you know i i figured when we, that that apex would be your kendrick that seems like the game that you just seem to care the most about would you say that that's always been the case would you say that overwatch used to be that with maybe one and two was caused it to kind of take a back seat or have you always felt more emotionally invested in apex um always more with apex because yeah. i've put money in that into that game like always mm-hmm. and overwatch the over <laughs> overwatch i've overwatch put, yeah i've only That's put nice. money into getting the battle pass okay and that that was it like i don't you know i've bought a lot of uh like skins and heirloom events and stuff on apex but besides the battle passes i haven't put a dime into overwatch like back with it back in overwatch one it was like loot boxes and stuff Mm -hmm. nothing yeah so i feel like it's always been apex Hmm. interesting interesting i like it i like it found a weird way to connect that yeah make it yeah i like that putting overwatch is your drake yeah Mm -hmm. but uh topics do you want to go uh yeah, let's roll into topics then. So okay. um I'll go first with mine, trying to figure out how to navigate this from a discussion, but more so just want to get your your kind of idea on things. So um the topic of like DEI, diversity and equity and inclusion and all these things is hot. Uh from it being around a lot of corporations to there being some states that are kind of kind of outlawing the actual like concept or practice of it, that particular like I guess, uh, term or title. Um, Gaming has long sought to do this. I think gaming leans a certain way sociopolitically and tries to reach to do those things. And a lot of that sentiment is expressed um, through games journalism. I think of outlets seven, ten years ago. I really think of outlets like uh, Kotaku or Kotaku. And Polygon or Polygon <laughs> uh, were a couple of like, you know, and, and obviously Eurogamer and a couple of other uh, publish- publications have also done stuff like that. So. I'm I'm basing kind of this this conversation on the backdrop of the recent release of screenshots and different details for Ubisoft's upcoming Assassin's Creed game, Assassin's Creed Shadows. OK, this is mm-hmm. an Assassin's Creed game that takes place in Japan. Assassin's Creed fans have been pining for a Jap- a Japan, a game based in Japan for I don't know how many years. 
I think maybe going back to like not long after Assassin's Creed 2. Like if they've been wanting this thing wow. for decades. Um and they're finally okay. getting one. Japan and China have been like the main two like we want. Got it. Um they revealed it. I think it's they show two characters. The assumption is that you can play both these characters. I think that's the case, but not 100% sure. Um, one is a uh, obviously Japanese assassin. It, it appears to be a female. And the other one is a samurai warrior. Um, and it all, I think either it was confirmed or all assumptions believe it to be the samurai Yasuke. And for those that don't know, Yasuke is considered the first and possibly only only black samurai. Okay. So um, I saw these screenshots uh, looking through comments and different things like that. And my first thought was what when I saw Yasuke and then uh, it went to faint annoyance. So I'm coming to this up from the from the perspective of it feels like gaming does this. But a lot of a lot of companies do this. They kind of use the idea of inclusion and representation as a way to buy cheap goodwill and favor with the public because that's what it does. Um, of course, you're going to have people, you know, people that are like up in arms against it or for whatever biased reasons they have, but maybe also some completely reasonable reasons that they have. And so I'm looking through this and I, I'm thinking, well, why Yasuke? Why would you pick this story? Everyone's been wanting. Assassin's Creed to tell a uniquely Japanese story. Right. And Yasuke has a story. It has he has an important story. It is not uniquely Japanese. Right? So right. so for an example for an example of that, right? Yasuke's story can't be Jin Sakai's story. If I'm think if I'm going back to Ghost of Tsushima, right? Mm -hmm. Because the their their background and what they went through is different, right? Yeah. Um and Yasuke's attachment to Japan is going to be different than someone who was born and raised there. So the question kind of becomes, like I said, mine is, is, well, why Yasuke? What does this mean? Assassin's Creed has always dabbled in historical figures. They've always dabbled in alterating stories and building different mythos with historical figures. Um, I, I, But I feel like I need to know more about the about the motivation for Yasuke being the character they include. Mm -hmm. Because to me, on, on surface, it feels like we want to be diversity, and even our diversity, even though we're already doing a Japanese story, so that is diversity, if you consider it from like a mostly European standpoint, we wanted to double on it. Like, they're right. almost like, oh, you think this is cool? Check this bleep out. One of the samurais is a black guy. Now that can, that may not be what their intent is, right? But yeah. when I see all these different companies and different corporations, um, you know, putting out whatever they were doing when the whole George Floyd thing was happening and pandering, which is what it was, right? And um, seeing no real progress be made there, I have to wonder what the intent of using, of, of including Yasuke's story is. Are you using his story and his mythos as a means to... I don't know, gain favor, say that you're doing something different, say that you're doing something inclusive, or do you actually genuinely want to portray his story in a way that is meaningful and that enlightens everyone? Um, right. I'm going to assume it's not the latter, that it's more of the former, because it's mm -hmm. Ubisoft, and they're a corporation. And it wasn't, a, it wasn't until a couple of years ago that this company was enthralled in a sexual harassment lawsuit. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what their intentions are. I don't know right. if these are good people or not. Um, but that led me to think about, like, is this part of the pressure we're seeing from, like, gaming journalism? Is that something that's happened before? Um, just kind of, like, what do we think of, what do we think about the way that gaming in particular takes their approach to, I guess, diversity or representation, right? Mm -hmm. um, because past things I've seen, they always seem, they always seem kind of vapid. Right. And like a, a last example I'll I'll give is remember Battlefield One? Mm -hmm. Battlefield One came out and they had the thing of the guy, uh, the black guy, like from World War One. And they were like, hey, this is World War One. 
there were black soldiers in World War One, right? The Harlem Freedom Fighters, I think they're called. Um, either Har- or Har- Harlem, something like that, right? And people were like, oh, you can actually play black soldiers in World War One," And everyone's like, yeah, this is cool. And some people are like, this doesn't make a lot of sense. And everyone's like, no, yeah, it does. It's representation. It's inclusion. And you're just against it. Well, guess what? I played Battlefield 1. And you play the Harlem, I'm sorry, you, you play the black soldiers in the tutorial mission. You don't play the that was it anywhere else in the game. So then, but they're but they're tape, on switch. the they're on the cover. Mm-hmm. The black guy is on the cover. The black guy is in the marketing. You play the black guy in the tutorial mission. That's it. So, gaming doesn't have a great history with this. Companies in general don't have great history with this. And so right. I'm just curious. I mean, I obviously I've, I've expressed like my reluctance, my caution, and my mm-hmm. kind of like you know what what has been. I guess what's your expectations for that and what has kind of been your perception of how gaming is covered and dealt with this type of thing, at least recently. Okay. So before I get down to that, I have a few questions maybe. Yeah. So like going into the, the Japanese culture and we're going into samurai, it looks like for Assassin's Creed. Mm-hmm. Do you have any idea how long the samurais reigned? Was it like a couple hundred years, a couple decades? Uh, I think so. There's different there's different eras of um of the of the uh samurai age, but I'm trying to think here. I think it was a, at least a couple of hundred. Okay, so um, if that is the case, there's all these years, and I'm sure of qu- at least quite a few well named samurais that. They could have done this on. Yeah. So I'm looking up. I just did a, a, a really surface level Google search. Columbia Asia for educators says that the age of the samurai was from 1185 to 1868 AD. Holy crap. So 600, so 600 years. some years. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say probably at least 20 well-named samurais that did something outstanding, mm-hmm. you know? So they have all these choices, even if it was five. They have five choices to choose from. They they didn't have to choose this one. And also, what what was the guy's name? Yasuke. Yasuke. So this other samurai, the the woman you're talking about, assassin rather, was this at the same time, or is this a made up character? Um the the woman you said. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I can't remember. So, either way, I I don't think it was necessary. As you said, it's not coming from a complete Japanese history. Even if he grew up in Japan, his story is going to be different than a Japanese uh, upbringing in Japan. Mm-hmm. Because that's 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 even how it is here in America, right? So, yeah, I don't I don't think this was necessary. They definitely could have done something better. You know, use another real samurai if that's the way you guys wanted to go. And then, as a a, a general statement, I completely understand the uh, inclusivity of n- nowadays because. Growing up, it was all mostly white people, white men, everything, you know, because that's just what was allowed, Mm -hmm. you know. So one one thing is a lot of people were very upset with the Resident Evil series on Netflix because who who they cast as uh, Wesker. Right. Yeah. And. Yeah, I get it. It's not like the game, yada, yada, but like. It was in America, in a city. It, it could have been anybody, and I mean, he did great as an actor for Wesker. And I mm-hmm. wasn't upset about that at all, because it wasn't, in my opinion, a very mandatory thing. Mm-hmm. That's just Resident Evil was made in '93 or '94 or whatever, and that's what was everywhere. Mm-hmm. 
and you know uh going with with spider-man you know peter parker white guy but miles mm-hmm. morales black kid really cool y- yeah really cool yeah. yes you got the black swagger right so swagger and, <laughs> yeah yeah what was it what was it the swagger of a of a teenage of a of a black teen yeah yeah there we go that's the statement so it that yeah needs it but if there isn't a necessity of what the person is you can make them anything mm-hmm. if 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 you're looking for inclusivity pick those people yeah, in my opinion, like yeah. another another really big uproar was uh, the new Little Mermaid. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not like the original, you know, Ariel's white. Like, it's a mermaid. Yeah, if mermaids are real, they're probably green. Right. Something a fish, right. more of a fish color. So it you're doesn't saying, matter. You're which saying that like, also was a good movie. Right. You're saying like, it, which I agree. Like, it doesn't really matter if. The characters being built in their racial or ethnic background isn't interlocked with their character. Like, it's how it functions within a story, right? Yeah. So, like, Little Mermaid, like, it doesn't matter if Ariel's white or black because it doesn't it doesn't play into her story. Like, it can she can be any of those, and it's still the same story, right? Uh, yeah. None of that stuff's contingent upon a race or background. And I guess, like, yeah, kind of, I think... With like Yasuke, what I think, like the main thing I'm I'm saying, and I think pretty much kind of like what you're echoing too, is that like, if you're going to include Yasuke, the story better be Yasuke's story, right? Right. Like it better not be just a samurai story, right? Because then, because then you're you you're proxying in a black person, which is the erasure of a Japanese person's story, because samurais are innately a Japanese thing, right? Exclusively, pretty so, much, except so, this guy. Yeah, so you're erasing that, and you're also erasing Yasu- Yasuke's um, particular story, like, you know, like like actual story. Um. So, yeah, the hope is that they they do right by that. Um, it it kind of yes. reminds me of, like, and I mentioned before, like, in the, in the, in the pre-show, like, um, there was a lot of criticism before about Kingdom Come Deliverance, um, this whole big bohemian Europe, and there's like no other people besides white people in it. And mm-hmm. gaming media had a big problem with it. Not really any gamers I heard at the time, mostly gaming media. They're like, why aren't there any black people in this, right? It's always kind of interesting too, when the gaming media, which mostly comprised of white people, were like, well, why aren't there any, any black people in it? And it's like, ah, oh, it's nice to think that of all of all the discrepancies, it's the blacks that stuck out to you. Because <laughs> right. Asians or 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 Assyrians or or or, or Persian or any other kind of um, uh, racial or ethnic ethnicity being represented, you don't care about that. But my roommate is black, so why aren't there any black people <laughs> in my game? And um, you know the developers like, well, there weren't really a lot of black like like to a point there weren't a lot of black people to a point where it was like it's not really it doesn't make a lot of sense to represent them in the game. And they're like, yeah, but you know you could. Still, that's representation, and I'm sitting here like, you know, you could have the Moors and stuff that they're saying you can put them in there, and I'm sitting here like, you think the more the Moors are representative of me in this game? Like they're the proxy for me. I don't have, I don't think I have anything culturally or mentally similar to the Moors. I don't think the Moors represent me at all. Mm-hmm. They just happen to have a darker skin tone like I do, but they don't represent me at all. But you think that they're a proxy for me being represented in this game? That's kind of weird, Kotaku. In Polygon, that's kind of <laughs> weird. Um, so yeah, I think it's the same. It's it's. I fear that it's the same, but hopefully it's not. Hopefully we get. If they're gonna do Yasuke, they gotta do Yasuke. Y- Yasuke, what? Yasuke. Y- y- I think Yasuke. it's Yasuke. Okay. Um, if they're if they're gonna have him represented, he was included in Samurai Warriors. You can play him as a character, so it's not like this is the very first game to represent Yasuke, but um. Mm-hmm. This is the first one, I think, to represent them in a narrative story driven way. So if you're going to do it, tell a story. I don't want some regular random samurai story. And then you're like, oh, man, because you could have put someone else there that's in that that. The samurai culture can represent to them in a, in a different way that's much more, I think, um, realistic and respectful for what samurai meant for to Japan 
mm. to Japanese people back then. Right. So, yeah, hopefully they do that. But we'll see. It's Ubisoft. I don't have high hopes. Uh, <laughs> I don't have high hopes for that. I don't even have high hopes for the game being good. Mm-hmm. Nevertheless, I'm doing that well. Um, but, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But that's, uh, that is it for my topic, though. Okay. That was a good one. Thanks. Um, let's go to mine. That's completely left field compared to that. Let's flip it. So there's been quite a few now, and there, you know, some of them even more recent, which I think makes them even better, is these like workout kind of games, right? Mm-hmm. Like I know the biggest one that comes to mind was We Fit. Oh yeah. That thing, that thing exploded. Everybody had a Wii Fit board, you know. Yeah. So, my topic is, is video game workouts a good compensate compensation for a workout in general, especially if you're either uncomfortable going to the gym or you can't mm-hmm. afford equipment or you're not able to do regular workouts. I think, um, yeah, I, I, I think they, I think they can be, I think if you're actually like going about utilizing them the way that they're meant to, right. Not, not cheesing it. Like there are certain ways, especially with like we fit and like those other ones, you could like cheese them or whatever, but like actually mm-hmm. doing the workouts. I know for my, um, meta quest two, there's a boxing game I bought. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, I think it was like 10 bucks or something, but you can, um, spar with a digital, person or fight a digital person and you like level like you fight a person you beat them and you're leveling up you're ranking up you're going against different boxers you can spar just practice and that's all a good workout when you're actually like you know when you're throwing the punches you're actually putting stuff behind them right like actually Mm -hmm. getting your cardio and stuff going they could be really good especially if you have some discomfort with maybe going to like a gym to work out i mean obviously there's some things that will do that that you just can't get unless you go to like a gym or get certain kind of exercise equipment that engages certain parts of your body. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think they're pretty good for just like general cardio that you want to make sure you keep up with. Um, I think of that, I think of games like, um, like beat saber can kind of give you a pretty decent workout, you know? Oh yeah. Um, So (laughs) yeah, I think if you're, if you're doing those that they're like, they work really well and they're really good because they're, like you said, if you're uncomfortable, they're just really accessible for everyone. Mm-hmm. And I mean, granted or not, how accessible is a VR headset, right? You have to kind of put right. that into the equation. But when you think of like, uh, or even maybe you're not, you're like we Fit, you had that board. I'm trying to think um, the Switch, because Nintendo came out for something with the Switch that was supposed to be kind of like a Wii Fit or like a Wii Sports type of thing. And it didn't hit the same, but it had kind yeah, of the same Yeah, I think it's like Wii it. Adventure. Yeah, maybe something like that, right? Yeah. But it's the idea that, like, those are more accessible options, you would think of, right? And they're, like, options you own and you can do at home when you have the time and you're comfortable doing them. And um, they can be really good. Again, if you're trying to get in shape, like, like really massively do some life-changing stuff, that's maybe not it. But it could possibly be if you take it slow and you're doing a bunch of other stuff. I saw it as like a really, a really nice way to stay conditioned. You're trying to mm-hmm. switch stuff up. So like, like before I used to bike a lot. So I used to do like 30, 45 minutes on a bike every night. And as I got busier, more, more responsibilities, I just didn't have that time anymore. So it was nice at some point that I had incorporated. Well, I'll do three, five minute rounds or I'll do three, three minute rounds. Right. And that was enough cardio to kind of get me in for the day, keep me somewhat conditioned and I can keep going about living my life. Right. So right. I think they're, I think they're awesome. And you know, the more stuff they have into them, the, the kind of weirder and nerdier and inter- interactive they can make them the better. But um, I would say that's been one of the great things about my VR headset that I've used. I have limited use with it. It was mm-hmm. that. And then one time I did a national geographic tour and, and I got scared by an elephant. But uh, besides that, it's mostly been the boxing thing. That's been cool. Uh, that's been really useful. That's really cool. I actually have been meaning to get that game and just never put on the VR, so I just completely forgot about it. But I that's what kind of uh, made me think about this is because uh, one of my coworkers actually talked about it a while ago too, and he said like mm-hmm. it 
it beats the crap out of them because you're actually, like you said, you're actually, you know, throwing the punches and doing the moves yep. and stuff like that. It really works your body. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm kind of going to repeat what you said because I mean, I agree with what you were saying. I think it is great cardio workouts and stuff. I know, like, the Wii, you just had to do, like, the up-down thing and, like, it would make you do push-ups on it and, you know, do the poses and stuff like that. And, like, Beat Saber, you're moving around like crazy, like you said. Mm-hmm. And uh, my son plays uh, a lot of Gorilla Tag. That boy is sweating when he's yeah. done with that game. All yeah. the spinning and running and just arms flailing everywhere. Mm-hmm. His hair is longer than mine and just soaked. Yeah. So that's even a good workout. That's not even a workout game. And then, you know, the mention games like uh, DDR or Pump It Up. If you get into the higher yeah. levels, that is a cardio machine like i can't play the songs i used to play not because i'm not as good but i don't have the cardio yeah i can still keep up for the first 30 seconds but then i'm dead because i can't breathe Mm -hmm. so uh yeah i i have to agree you're you're not gonna get bulk and massive and you know really chiseled body but you 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 know you'll stay in a better shape than if you didn't work out at all. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think it's like a great way to just like stay conditioned, right? To like keep some of that, that, that cardio, uh, that cardio, you know, uh, uh, I guess ability still, you know, where you're able to do things and not be so tired out. It's funny. You mentioned like, you know, like your son, like playing that game and like getting completely like he's soaked and getting worn out. Because I have a, a cousin, younger cousin, what he does is he doesn't really do those games. I don't think he actually plays a lot of VR games, but mm-hmm. he's such an amped up little dude that he'll be playing other games with a controller and he's jumping around and bouncing around while he's playing it, right? Because he's just so <sighs> into everything. And I'm looking mm-hmm. and I'm like, this is absurd. Like, you play games to do all these feats while you're just sitting down, right? And he's got his character. I mean, this, this, this kid's up here playing cup, Cuphead, which is hard enough just to play it regularly. And right. he's up there just destroying a cuphead and he's all excited and he's jumping around and jumping here and jumping there. And it's like, <laughs> man, like this is insane. You know? I mean, while I'm trying to do three, three minute rounds in, in the, in the boxing game and the quest. And it's like, like I said, you have to, especially with games like that, you have to treat them as serious as you can. Right. Like don't do like right. little feeble, like, Oh, this is the punch. Like you have to put, you know, Move, move your body. You have to act like you're actually throwing a punch, right? Um, right? Which is why they tell you to make all that space. And then please use the wrist straps, everyone. Use the oh, wrist for straps. For the love like of everything, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've and, seen but, so many videos of controllers going through TVs and screens. Yeah. and Yeah, but I even Ooh. think about, like, the, like the back in the day we sports, like the bowling. Like, if you were actually taking it serious and doing your whole approach and everything like that, you'd get a little bit of a, you get a little bit of a workout out of you. If you were just cheesing the remote, then no, of course. But if you're trying to be somewhat serious with it, you can get a decent workout. I think that's pretty much the case with all those games. You know, I even think back to like some of the older ones, like I think back at like guitar hero and rock band, like you aren't doing a whole bunch, but you see those people that are super serious with the finger play and all that stuff. They're in strumming. Yeah, and you see them get intense to it for like a two and a half, mm-hmm. three minute song. By the time they're done, they are breathing heavy. They are like, man, that was intense. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, take a seat. I know you're sitting, but take a seat. <laughs> you know, like that. That's crazy. Yeah, and then uh, also like games like uh, Just Dance. Yeah. And I, I had the Michael Jackson experience for my 360. Oh, yeah? yeah, those those get you sweating. Mm-hmm. But again, oh, yeah. you know, if you're not cheesing it. Right, right. But also also very fun. You look they like are. a fool and you have a good time with it. Yeah, you just, I mean, you know, like I was saying, with the one thing working out, take yourself there. But on the other hand, you know, things like just dance and different stuff like that. If you're just having fun with it, get a nice little workout, get the heart going a little bit, you know. They aren't meant mm-hmm. to do crazy challenges. You aren't trying to train for, you know, something serious, you know. Right. Is it, these aren't like... These aren't like let me stunt on the gram worthy exercises, but it can <laughs> make sure that you're not, you know, completely out of breath when you go up a set of stairs or something like that. You know what I'm right. saying? Like it's yeah, they're they're pretty they're pretty good for that. 
and I really enjoyed the the boxing one. I haven't sunk a ton of time into it. I'd probably like to go back into it more, but for the money I pay for it, it feels like it's well worth it. I can always fire my quest back up, hop into it, reset my area zone so that way I'm not punching anyone on accident and right. just like go in there and just keep bringing it in and being a boxer. I remember I did a couple of a couple of uh, workouts and I felt pretty pretty good about myself. I'm like I did it. I beat the brakes off a couple of guys. Mm-hmm. And I am ready to beat this one guy looks kind of scary, but I'm gonna break the brakes off of him. <laughs> I'm gonna beat the brakes off of him and I'll keep getting conditioned. So all right. Yeah. But yeah, those are awesome. Great topic. Thanks. That means uh since we have passed our topic, that we're near the end of the podcast level. Mm-hmm. And that brings us to final thoughts. Final thoughts is where we can give a final thought about anything that is either related or unrelated to this podcast episode. So who would like to give their final thought first? I would give mine. I had mine about something earlier and I just forgot what it was. I so, was going to say you go first because you had an idea from earlier, but you forgot yeah. it. It happens quick, man. I, 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 the multi, you know, you got your single, now you got your single processor and your multi-thread processor. My single processor is still pretty good, but my multi-thread processor, it'd be struggling sometimes. It's a good but update, I'm tr- huh? But I'm trying to think, was it in regards to, uh, um, was it maybe in regards to something I'm playing? Yes, it was. And now I remember yes. exactly what it was. So okay. part of the reason I've been, I haven't been playing much, but I have been watching a lot. And I think mm-hmm. that now, unfortunately... Well, for one, I already went and bought a game mm-hmm. that I shouldn't have bought. Mm-hmm. And now I'm probably going to buy another game I shouldn't buy. <laughs> That's because I've been I've been watching. You know how like some people get into a book and they're just yes. dialed in. That's mm-hmm. me a Let's Play series. If I find a good Let's Play series, I will saw through it. And so I've been watching these Let's Play series on this game called Project Hospital. It's an old game. It's not a new one. But it's a game where you build your own hospital. Guess what? Doesn't that sound familiar with the games I play, right? Mm-hmm. A little and I've bit, been, maybe. And I've maybe. been I've been watching the crap out of this, and I can't get enough of it. I've been watching these two distinct Let's Plays. They're both done by British people. I don't know if that means anything. But, you know, this guy's like, oh, we got to build a cardiology department. And I'm like, yeah, build that cardiology department. <laughs> oh, we got to put a... Oh, you got to put... You, oh, we got to put a sonograph into this room. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. You put that sonograph in there. Okay. I've been getting really, really into it in a, in a despicable way. Right. But I've uh, been really invested. Oh, you know, our x-ray is making a lot of money. Maybe we should build another x-ray machine. And I'm like, yeah, why don't you build another two or three of them? You know, that's how I'm saying it in my mind as I'm watching these let's plays. So that's, that's what I've been. That's kind of what I've really been into. So I'm pretty sure that I'm going to end up buying project hospital. When it goes on sale, I don't pay full price. <laughs> it's kind of strange that their hospital's making money when I thought it was nonprofit over there, man. Oh well, Project Hospital clearly a game made by American developers for the for an American <laughs> audience. They're they're it's straight up they're straight up like we have to offer we have to offer make more comprehensive services for our hospital so we can make more money. And then I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah. So we have guys, we have to really start making more money we're going to have to build a surgery wing and i'm like you're gonna you're building a surgery wing because you really have to make more money <laughs> i thought it was to fix or help people like, right once we build this we'll be printing money we won't have to worry about it at all i'm like oh man and then they have different contracts you can have up to four contracts with your hospital so and the contracts are with different insurances different insurance groups but one group is uninsured and once they start making enough they immediately turn that contract off. So they're like, we'll no longer take uninsured people at our hospital. And I'm like, sweet Lord, like, like, let's ease up. This is a game. True Americans. It is a game. But I say that well aware that I um, have on several occasions assassinated babies for land titles. So I understand this, but I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? And Project Hospital feels a little bit more real than Crusader Kings. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, that's my final thought. Project Hospital. I've been watching it. Can't wait to watch more. All right. Let's see. 
I my final thought. Yard work. Yard work. It kind of comes full circle. We talked about it a little bit earlier. Yeah. It, I. It might just be me with my like ADHD brain, but like there's a lot of stuff I could do in my yard to make it look like fantastic, best mm-hmm. on the block. You know, there's there's good looking yards on this block. I could I could easily be the best if I put the time into it. But I don't. I don't. I just mow my lawn. Yeah. And that's it. And it's a riding lawnmower, so I can't get to the edges of everything. So I have little pieces of long grass here and there in another place. Uh, you know, it's not can't get too close to my garage, you know, so it, you, it looks like I just mow the lawn, which is all I do. Now, but do do you have a weed whacker? I do. I have a weed whacker. I have an edger. I have a blower. Well, like, I have nah. all of this stuff. Yeah. All right. And I don't do it. Yeah. I just I I have the want, but I don't have the power. Mm. That's it's but important I, to have the power. Yeah. I also I have I have an acre, so like that doesn't help either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like yeah, most, it's true. Most people's front yards is like fifty feet, mm-hmm. I think, seventy five feet, something like that. Mm-hmm. Mine is a hundred and fifty. Yeah. That's so a that's a lot of sidewalk that's a lot. to edge and, you know, get all the crap out of the cracks in between them. And <sighs> yeah, it's so much. I think I, I just feel overwhelmed about them. I'm like, well, you know what? If I don't do it, it looks better than if I do do it and then not keep up on it. Yeah, that's true. I got you there. But... Do you typically when you're out, I'm assuming the answer is yes. When you're out there zooming around, riding a mower, cutting your yard. Are you usually listening to music? No, because I can't get my phone to connect to freaking any earbuds. Really? Yeah. See, that helps. Tremendous. Oh, it does. I used yeah. to do it all the time when my uh, other phone had a headphone jack. I would just yeah. plug in headphones and go to town. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would do that. And then um, I'd do that and mostly try to play some high energy music. Some really high energy up gets you going music, which... Mm. um. I would say that, like, recently I've been doing a lot more, like, uh, drill music and different stuff like that and Afrobeat music, and it's really good. Mm-hmm. Keeps high energy, gets you going. But, um, hey, maybe you just need a one, maybe you just need a once a season, once a season edge wheat whack. You do it once, set your base, and then you never do it again for the rest of the season. You're good to go. I, I like that. That could be a good goal. And that's what I do because what happens is just a little bit longer on the on the yard on the lawn work thing because it's also a thing I have to do every week, right? My my grass grows incredibly fast. Mm-hmm. Is that I'll use a stick edger, I will edge it. Now this year I had to do it like four or five times, which is nutty, but I do that so I can get a really nice edge, clean edge going. And then whenever I edge uh, the rest of the time, I just use the weed whacker, and because it's been Set, set apart by that stick edger all the mm-hmm. edges stay clean for the rest of the year and then i'm not looking around two or three things it's just a lawnmower and a weed whacker and i take care of everything now again my yard is appreciably smaller than yours but it is it is a strategy that is a good strategy i like that yeah yard work gotta do it you know you don't want to you know yep yeah. yeah. you should get these things on your door called citations yeah, and the city comes at you and says, hey, why aren't you cutting your yard? Huh? What's up with that? And then you try to say, hey, I feel like sometimes you guys misuse my taxes. And then they don't they don't they talk don't. back to you. <laughs> uh, but that uh. brings us to the end of level 104 of the Thoughts and Players podcast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the podcast on your preferred podcast service. And if you want to follow the pod on the socials, you can do so. By liking and following us on Facebook. We're at Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash thoughts and players. That is all one word. We're also on Instagram and TikTok at thoughts.players. You're on Twitter at thoughtplayer2. And we are on YouTube where we upload video versions of the podcast every week. If you want to support us, there's a couple ways you can do that. Merch store. We usually include links to it when we uh, do our posts. 
our Teespring store where you can get different stickers and cases. I've shown it before. I will show it again. Once again, forgot my shirt, but like a cell, like a cell, uh, cell phone <laughs> case, had it upside down like that. Um, but we also have other things like stickers and hats and all that, shirts, hoodies. Um, and then also we have a Patreon, two, five, and seven dollar, three different tiers. We get a bunch of different goodies for uh, for each each tier. Uh, I think this upcoming Sunday, or well, won't be, it will be the Sunday before this episode comes out. Will be episode two of the Game Dev Tycoon series. Will be out for patrons to so make sure to check that out. And get caught up on episodes right. one and two, and then we'll have more coming out after that. Uh, but that is it for me, David. Was there anything else you wanted to add? Peace. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we will catch you on the next level. <laughs>